Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. I want to start right off with the first article is the National Quantum Initiative. Right out of today's date, the Quantum Frontiers Report. Welcome to quantum.gov, the home of the National Quantum Initiative and ongoing activities to explore and promote quantum information science, the National Quantum Information Act, which was signed into law on December 21st, 2018. The purpose of the act is to ensure the continued leadership of the United States in quantum information science and its technology applications. It provides for a coordinated federal program to accelerate quantum research and development for the economic and national security of the United States. And here we actually have the Quantum Frontiers report on community input to the nation's strategy for quantum information science and i believe it's like 32 pages feel free to click on that if you're interested it's pretty interesting read if you like quantum information on the next article we have japanese giant sbi acquires daldao crypto exchange and the sbi now has two licensed crypto trading platforms in japan so SBI and Holdings now owns two licensed cryptocurrency trading platforms with this new acquisition of DowDow Exchange, according to an official announcement on October 7th, which is today's date, SBI's foreign exchange and derivatives arm SBI liquidity market has acquired all shares of DowDow, making it a wholly owned subsidiary of the company. Formerly 40% owned by internet giant Yahoo, Japan's YJFX, DowDow launched its crypto trading service in May of 2019. With a new acquisition, SBI now has two crypto trading platforms as the company is already offering crypto trading services through its crypto-focused venture capital arm, SBI VC Trade. In the next article, the best blockchain universities programs actually pay students to learn. And I think that would be pretty amazing. Go get paid to go to college. Out of all the universities with blockchain education programs, two stand out by offering students paid opportunities to learn by working. At MIT and Berkeley, students can take accessibility and well-paid jobs at blockchain startups, often for part-time arrangements like 12 hours a week. The MIT Bitcoin Club president, Nate Foss, said his student organization has a dedicated Slack channel for crypto-related job openings, plus the MIT Bitcoin Club's alumni network includes local companies like Skynet Labs, which often hires undergraduates. We don't have any formal programs or pipelines, but plenty of people are at early-stage startups, so they reach out to their network, Foss said. And at UC Berkeley, meanwhile, in California, the blockchain at Berkeley is more formal than a student club, but separate from like-minded university research labs. The organization BAB is another one of the leading conduits for students seeking Silicon Valley jobs. BAB is mostly self-funded and student-run thanks to a consulting service utilized by companies like Qualcomm, ExxonMobil, Ford, and PG&E. On the next and final article of this video, U.S. explores restrictions on Ant Group Tencent payments platforms and directly from Bloomberg News. The United States is considering restrictions on China's Ant Group as well as Tencent Holdings Limited over concerns their digital payments platforms threaten national security, Bloomberg News reported on Wednesday. Such a move would mark a new deterioration in relations between the world's two largest economies, which have been stained by disputes over trade, Hong Kong's autonomy, cybersecurity, and the spread of the novel issue at hand. This step would also illustrate how President Donald Trump's administration is now seeking to prevent Chinese firms from ingraining themselves in the U.S. financial system before they become a significant threat. Both Ant's Alipay and Tencent's WeChat payment platforms are used primarily by Chinese citizens holding accounts in Renminbi, 
but most of their interactions with the U.S. are with U.S. merchants accepting payments from Chinese travelers and businesses. And we've discussed this in quite a few videos, how they actually connect back to Ripple and Stellar. Just want to give you that quick update and leave you with a final thought. Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. Remember, this is not financial advice. It is for entertainment purposes only. Much love, and we'll catch you in the next one.